Hello everybody, I'm Stephen Bird and welcome back to the fifth and final video in the Xlights tutorial moving from LOR to Xlights. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to go directly from a Falcon to the rest of a Lightarama network without having to use a USB dongle like we have in the previous parts. So in, like I said, in this part, the way we're going to start with this is before in the previous parts, we did add LOR. Well, in this case, we don't want to do that anymore because we're not doing a USB output. Instead, we want to do add E131 since we're going to be directly throwing it out through E131 to the Falcon. So what we want to do is we want to do a method on unicast and have an IP address. I'll type in my actual IP address for this controller. So 192.168.1.156. So basically, we're going to make it easy on ourselves and do a starting universe of 1 with one universe and last channel 16, because why not? And basically what this means is that this is one Lightarama controller. It's basically what I'm trying to simulate here. So I'll make a description one. Priority usually has nothing to do with anything uh, unless you're doing like on the same, the same universe, anything like that. Usually you just kind of want to leave that alone. So as you'll see right here, I have uh, number one network type E131 on a port of 192.168.1156, universe one, number of channel 16. So basically where I want to go from there is I want to look at the layout tab, and I've already got a uh, what I like to call a mini mega tree, uh, since it's more AC lights instead of the bigger, longer RGB strands in most cases. Uh, so basically what I have here is I have a 16 strand tree, and if you remember correctly, in the other videos that I had, you'll see that the string type I have on single color, and that's what allows me to do the 16 all the way around. So once I do that, I'm going to click Save. Now, I'd like to jump right into the sequencer, but I actually can't just yet. What I have to do is I have to move back into my actual Falcon controller settings, which I'll boot up right now. I'll go into status. There's my status on my actual controller. So you'll see that in my network configuration, I'm running this actually through uh, one of my older shows, which was back in Christmas. And I have universes 58 through 73, 1 through 16. You'll see that universe 1 is at the very bottom on number 17, but we're not going to mess with that for just a moment. If we first all, first of all, once you get into the Falcon controllers, you're going to want to go into serial outputs. And here is where basically I like to say all of the action happens. Basically what this is, is this is one, two, three, and four of DMX outputs on either the right or the left side of your Falcon controller, depending on which side you're facing it on. And I'll show you guys what that is in just a minute. So basically what you want to do is usually ignore one, ignore two, ignore four, and three is usually what you want to use. You can use two, uh, but I really recommend three. Is I've, Every time I've tried it on number three, it's worked every single time. So basically, you'll see that each one of these have pixel data. And basically what that means is that with pixel data, you're going to be running, say, a differential expansion board directly out of the Falcon. That's what's going to allow you to do anything like um, the differential, the receiver boards. The expansion board is an actual expansion out, but the differential receiver boards, those can daisy chain directly off the Falcon. You can only do one of them though. And that's why it has port one, port two, and the missing port three, but port four is there. So basically what you could do is pixel data like that. And basically what that will do is whenever you daisy chain it off, it'll know that port one, two, three, and four will continue. But that's not what we're doing today. We're gonna move back and put it on serial data on type DMX, universe one, start address one. Click save. This is actually what we just did in the setup. You'll see universe one, channel 16, channels one through 16 on universe one to that port. Now what we want to do there is we'll want to move back to the E131 artnet and you'll see that I have 58. So let me actually delete that. You'll have 58 through 73, which is what I was originally. Usually you're not going to do something like this, but I keep mine on higher up universes. Like I said in one of my previous videos, this is so I don't get anything kind of jumbled up with any kind of LOR network that I'm using since I do it in USB mode. So what I'll do is I'll say add universes. First universe will be one. 
number of universes would be 1, universe size would be 16. It doesn't necessarily have to be 16, but it definitely helps whenever it comes to channel numbers. So just make sure that whatever you put on X lights for the number of channels, you match up in the Falcon. So you say add. I'll click save to that. So now what we've done is we've basically, or for the most part, linked universe 1 there with the serial output 1 in this. So now I'm going to go and hop on over and show you guys the hardware view on how this looks. Hey guys, so we are now back from the computer and now we are looking at the hardware here. So basically in this setup, you'll see that I've got the Falcon right here and the ports that I'm talking about are on this right side. I'm going to turn on the flashlight here. So now you can see looking directly on, you'll see DMX2 and DMX3. I'm currently running my cable out of DMX3, and you'll see also that I put it on LOR here. And basically what that means is that's going to allow everything that connects up will be running through LOR. If you put it on DMX, that'll run it out through DMX. This mainly comes into the case if you're putting it on LOR and you are saying you're running a dumb RGB controller. If that's the case and you have it on LOR, you can just run them in LOR mode. But if you have a dumb RGB controller and you're running them on DMX, you're going to have to change all the dip switches to accommodate for DMX channels instead of LOR unit numbers. So basically, we'll come back here. And like I said, it comes out through this and goes into my Lidarama controller as shown here. So you'll see that this is always on, and that is because E131 data is coming through and the LOR controller is receiving that data. The whole point of that is basically just telling you, hey, I'm receiving data. The difference here is on the USB. So if I was using this, the RSJ485 adapter, this would be blinking because data is not always coming out. But since you're running it out through here, that means that data is always coming out because of the orange light here. So basically, if I go ahead and go to the test that I had a minute ago, which is right here. If I go into the sequencer, you'll see that I have my little tree output here. Not sure why it's blinking like crazy though. But what we'll do is we'll just go and fill that up. The output to lights. And you'll see that it's actually not working. And the reason why is because we did not save it just a minute ago. And that can cause some serious issues because if you don't save it, then you're not going to get a good data transfer. So you'll see it kind of gets stuck in there a little bit. So if we go back in here. Make sure to save that. And you can also put this one to serial data as well, just in case. There you go. So basically what I was talking about there is when it comes to DMX2 and 3 on the serial outputs page, you'll see that they're kind of interchangeable. Uh, but basically how that works is you'll either do 2 or 3. So you'll have 2 and 3. But these are also, when it comes down to it, you can use either or because they'll both do it. Never use the, the, this port right here, which is exactly what I was talking about earlier. That was the problem that gave me a serious issue, was this first port right here. But as for 2 and 3, if you're just running one Lightarama network off of it, you can easily just do that and have it to where number 2 and number 3 allow you to do universes and start addresses off of them. If you do two separate ones, you need to make sure that whichever one you have coming out corresponds with the actual universe and start address that you want to have. And that is how you'll get something like this. And if I turn it off, then I'll turn off and turn back on. So I will see you guys on the computer. And that will just about do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the videos and I hope that they really did help. Um, I'm by no means a professional, but I really hope that I was able to help some people out there. Um, and if you guys have any questions, suggestions, anything like that, feel free to contact me at the on the holiday 
uh, Lighting Think Tank on Facebook, and I would be happy to talk uh, anytime. So like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next x tutorial video, hopefully down the line sometime soon. Thanks so much. Have a good one.